Hi, I'm Clint Cooper. I'm the emissions expert at AP Emissions. I'm here with Ryan McDonough, our product development expert. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we develop catalytic converters, how we go about developing that brand new aftermarket catalytic converter part. So Ryan, what's the first step? How do we come up with a new part? First thing we do is identify our need through customer requests, inquiries, uh, through our website, or um, phone calls through the tech line. Okay. VIO data. Okay, so also we look at this VIO data. What's, what's VIO? It's vehicle in operation. So okay. it lets us know how many of a certain type of vehicle are in a geographical area. Okay, great. So you can just find out how many uh, Camrys are in uh, Albany, New York, for example. That's right? correct. And so from that information, we can then decide if a part needs to get built because there's a lot of demand for it. Right, there's like a lot of, there's just a lot of people need that part. That's exactly right. So once we've identified that part we want to build, what's like the first step? Do I just go out and buy the OE and we copy that or do we, what, how do we go out doing this? We, we do that, but we also bring in the vehicle to our tech center. Okay. Uh, we'll throw it up on the lift, get our technicians to uh, rip the car apart, bring the exhaust system down. All right. And from there we uh, start our process to uh, develop a, a new part. So what's the process? Do I just, do I go under there with a tape measure and start figuring out, okay, I need a tube this long and a bend at 45 degrees on a, like how do, how do our techs go about doing this? So they'll just take the original off the car. Okay. Uh, build a fixture around it that allows us to lock in locations. So describe this fixture to me. Uh, it's a steel, see this is where it gets complicated. Yeah, this is cool, <laughs> complicated is great, man. Uh, this is a steel structure the uh, employees use. Um, like, so it's got like these, I, I've seen it before. Um, it's got these bolts that come up out of it, right? And it's parts where you can put the the metal into it and lock it down so that it's all in a, in a spot that you can weld together, right? Yeah, it's like a steel structure that holds all the components in place to guarantee fitment. All right, sometimes we call it a jig. That's so they go about developing this new jig so that they can basically develop a new part for this car. That's right. So they develop the parts, and from those parts, they develop the jig. Right, so we'll put the original in the jig. Okay. We'll fixture the, the around it. All right. And then that'll allow us to uh, be repeatable to the OE. Okay, so once we've, you know, we've prototyped it, we've gone through, it's almost sounds like an artisanal process where we develop that part. And then once we've got that master jig or fixture made, we put the OE back in the fixture to make sure that the fixture's accurate. Right? That's correct. And so then we can now start just assembling new parts. Is the time for production or what, is there more steps involved? There's a few more steps. So we will um, make a sample. Okay. We'll, we'll put that sample on the car to document the fitment. Oh, so it's not just against, we don't just check it against the, the jig that we made, but we then go put it back on the car and make sure it fits. That's correct. What happens if a, a model year is slightly different? Will we modify that OE part so it'll extend coverage to those other model years, or do we just make a new part for every time that, 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 that we need an OE copy? That's a great question. So we will bring in vehicles to test fit and hopefully extend our model years or carry over or carry up Okay. Uh, and, and use the same design. If a modification needs to be made where we can carry up with a small modification, we'll do that as well. So the warehouse only has to stock one part instead of two. Nice. Oh, that's, so that's less inventory in the shelves for our customers, which is terrific. Um, and that single part is gonna fit multiple vehicles just by sometimes adding a hanger or a slight bend on it where it will still fit the original purpose, but it also now fits that extended coverage. That's absolutely correct. Awesome. So at that point in time, you've got a jig fixed, uh, a fixture set up, and we're then basically ready to start production. We've put it back on the car, we're ready to go. So we'll have a few other processes first, like uh, getting the part in the catalog. Okay. Uh, and out to all of our partners and to the to our customers. Excellent. Uh, an MPI notification, so uh, everyone in the field knows about the new part. Okay. Then we'll flip it over to the production team at that point. And at that point, it's time to start producing the part. We produce some parts. Excellent. Well, this has been a terrific video. We've learned about our how we go about developing new parts in our next video, what we're going to look at is how we go about actually manufacturing those parts. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.